is presented by WinBet. Bet hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circa Las Vegas. You're listening to FGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. I'm so laser focused. I don't even know how to spell NBA. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I'm wearing my NBA shirt though. Shout out to Mello. I saw Sean doing a rare wardrobe change during the. Here, let me. You want to? You want to throw the Sixers gear? Yes. Or sorry, that's this is you. Like, look, look at that. Just full. Full Philly fan. Who knows? For, first, it was the uh, the Phillies. Now the Sixers. Well, Phillies right you know the, the NL NLCS. Yeah, Look out, baby. Not laser focused. Eagles are six and zero. Oh. Come on, uh, Julius attention. Julius Irving. Uh, I got a sweet Julius Irving throwback jersey my brother gave me. So got a rocket. There th- there was some confusion uh, behind the scenes. What are we doing? Eastern Conference. What yes. are we doing? Western Conference. My plan was to debut it on the Eastern Conference podcast, which is this podcast. Yeah, but you forgot. So, well, there was some. I thought we were starting with the Western. Then when we changed it, that we're starting with the Eastern. Can we hire some people that can know the difference between the East and the West? <laughs> that would that would uh, imply replacing ourselves, right? Hey, you know what? There is no replacement for win bet, baby. That's right, bet big, win bigger over on win bet. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. Bet a hundred dollars, get a hundred dollar free bet. Uh, I mean, these we're gonna be going through picking all the NBA win totals 30, 32. I don't even know. All I know is that uh, there are a ton of X. You can even build your own bet, oh aka the same game parlay for the National Basketball Association. Let's go, baby. Win totals all coming from the good folks over at WinBet. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet so they know we sent you bet big win bigger. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through win bet is available. If you're someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Let's rip it. All right. Joining us on the line, you know them from the NBA Gambling Podcast, which is back. Better than ever, going to be grinding out a bunch of shows for the season. First up, we are joined by Moonoff, the machine, Manji. What's up, Moonoff? Hey, gentlemen, what's going on? NBA season is here. It's it's only sport that matters. That's all I'm going to say. All right, <laughs> fuck the NFL. It's NBA time. We're going to oh, come gonna, on. Your Texans just won money. a game. Moonoff, look out! All right, Texans <laughs> division winners right around the corner, Ryan. If I didn't love how prickly Moonoff was about this, I would tell him he's fired <laughs> <laughs> with my lasers. Do do do! Oh, damn I don't it. know we what. I need don't a sound effect. God damn. It. Well, or do we want do do do, and actually use me doing the laser as the sound effect? I think that that could be good too. I I still think the I'll pull the Lego Movie uh, okay. sound effect because that's pretty funny. We'll to have me. to debate the in the Discord. We'll debate the laser sound effect. But I think do do do. Just slide into good. my DMs with your favorite laser <laughs> sound effect, and we'll get it get it on the show. This man also laser focus, uh, just coming off a very successful NFL pregame show. Mr. Terrell Furman. What's up, Terrell? What's going on? And the best sport is whichever one I'm talking about at that moment in time. Oh. That's that's what the best sport is. Right. That's and a real yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was football because the pregame show, hey, Ryan and I, we was on it. We gave Let's out Ryan had the uh the Ramaje Stevenson two touchdowns. Had the column, I had the Kyler Murray 11 to 1 most rushing yards in the game prop. Shout out to Ito Benjamin for just flopping oh, yeah. like I thought he would. I, like I go, I go to Terrell. I'm like, hey, Terrell. So we're on Eno Benjamin today, right? Because <laughs> I have a ton of Eno Benjamin. I've been so excited. I, I've been tweeting mm-hmm. out the eggplant emoji about Eno Benjamin. And then 
Uh, Terrell goes, nah, nah, I got a better way to play. <laughs> <laughs> you fade him like this. You take Kyler to have the most rushing yard. I mean, genius, genius, play. genius. Yeah. And then we hit a uh, shout out to magic man Blanco. He just recently yep. had a son. Congrats. He asked for a baby <laughs> formula parlay, which and he's means- swimming in baby formula now. <laughs> I wonder if you can just ask that, like you know, take it from the bookie right to the uh, Walgreens to yeah, get the baby. If, J- if Jake and can or, I get this much baby formula, please? I think if Jake, I mean, I know there's the Korean barbecue parlay mm-hmm. John brought to the yes. college uh, shows. Perhaps we need a graphic for the baby formula parlay of the week. We're a family show. Yes. All right, Jake yeah. if, or Josh, if you're listening, baby formula parlay of the week. We're gonna help these dads who are struggling and. You know, you're literally putting food on your family's table with these picks. This week's you're welcome. This America. week's uh, raise your family parlay is brought to you by Pampers. <laughs> Maybe is we can is get he a not sponsor. a candidate for real man of degens? Oh, is he, he not a candidate? I think for, he's he's for already her. he's already won. But yes, we need to we need to renominate Magic Man. Have we ever told the story on air about the time he uh, catered some food to a uh, sim operation? Uh, w- one day we'll talk about yeah. it. But Magic Man, all time real man. He's of earned his stripes as a real man of DJs. All right, let's get to it. Let's talk Eastern Conference win totals again. All these totals coming directly from sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash win bet. And uh, yeah, let's grip it and rip it. We're going to walk through all. 15 teams in the Eastern conference. Uh, I, I know you've, you've been hesitating on that topic uh, of how many teams in the NBA. I saw you struggle during the read. Uh, it's it's so a couple things things uh, like a, let me help you uh, help yourself. If you just select stuff in Google sheets, yes. you can get a count. count that's 15. one. That's one way to find it. Uh, the, yeah, the, Excel Excel is a very hard thing to work. Mm, like see, Terrell, it's called Google Sheets now. Come on, you're a millennial. Yeah. Uh, oh my bad. I'm but here's sorry, my here's my old. question because uh, some of us are laser focused on the NFL, and and I, as I dip my toe into the NBA waters, much like uh, the the piece of shit reporter who suggested on Get Up that the Giants should be tanking, it seems like even before the season has started. We are already having conversations about which team should be tanking. So, well, yeah. Oh, this is legendary. No, this is going to be legendary amount of tanking here because <laughs> guess what? This is the issue you have. Not only do you have a 7-2, could be 7-4. Nobody knows what his exact <laughs> height is. They just know there's so a 7. So mysterious. There. So not only do you have this guy who can bring the ball up the court, go drive, do everything like a guard while being seven feet, but you also have who is probably one of the best prospects like in a while as well in Scoop Henderson, who is just getting the ugly step center, the ugly stepsister treatment because you have a seven, seven, two person that plays like a card. Can it's I make insane. a bold prediction? I've read about this prospect. He's like Dikembe Mutombo mixed with Steph Curry, mixed <laughs> like the best of every player yes. in the history. Like he's got a little Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah. Can I make a bold prediction? Guy that big, gravity's tough on those dudes. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, not yeah. sorry, but I I wouldn't be that excited. Scoop sounds like a much uh, better uh, prospect for the uh, for yes. City Ball. All right, uh, so yeah, tanker trophy. That's that's what we're doing here. He he, he has Giannis aspirations. I think everybody because he kind of has the same frame as Giannis when Giannis came into the league, and then Giannis so happened to get some country f- uh, food up there and. In Milwaukee, and they thickened him up, put him on the weight plan. So I think that's what everybody assumes is going to happen with him. He started eating we'll cheese. See. Yeah, seven. Yeah, three, they said cheese. they for Webanyana. Uh, they said if he was in the draft with LeBron James, he would have been a higher ranked prospect than LeBron James, which is insane. <laughs> I mean, LeBron. LeBron had a I Hummer mean, in high school. You can't be ranked any compare. higher. I don't know how you compare them. They're literally 20 years apart. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, honestly though, I, I, as someone who has loosely followed basketball for a long time, it's the biggest mistake. The NBA teams have made throughout history. If you have length and height and athleticism, they get all fucking hot and bothered. And it doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you can ball. I mean, I, I would, I would have loved to see Cause I mean, how many times do we hear about great players? The, the guy that got drafted before Michael Jordan, the guy who got drafted before Kevin Durant, what do they? I mean, look, Greg Oden, great example. Yeah, great yeah. example. Anyway, everyone's in on Webin Yana. All right, start with. We'll start from the bottom, go to the top. Indiana Pacers win total set at twenty three and a half. 
again, like they have nothing going on. Uh, it's so comically low. I still think you go on the under because again, they are just they're going to be trying to get Webanyana, and there's a bunch of guys that they could unload trade wise as well. Um, you know, your buddy Heels and that's uh, those type of guys. Miles Turner maybe. Um, so I think they're I think they're just prime for tanking. I'm on the under. Moon off. Yeah, I agree with you about the under. I think they're. They're starting to shift towards, you know, the youth movement, right? Tyrese Halliburton, Chris Duarte, their first round draft picked um, uh, Ben Matherin. So you're right. I know there was rumors about Buddy Heald and Miles Turner possibly getting traded to the Lakers, but I think eventually, as we as the season progresses and maybe we get closer to the trade deadline, those two guys will be off the roster. And this team is going to be zero defense. Swiss cheese defense is going to be games where <laughs> their totals are going to be set at 240, 245. Oh it's just going to be 130 to 135 type of games for the Pacers. So I agree about uh, the under in this uh, on this team too. It seems like a good team to like find for DFS or fantasy. Like, Hey, when yeah. are your guys playing the Pacers? G- get a go all in. Wait. So are they going to, will they be tank? Like, will they be selling? I, I, I don't imagine they'll that be they selling wouldn't. two guys like Sean mentioned with uh buddy healed and miles Turner. But I know when we did the awards show on, um, on the NBA gambling podcast, uh, I was particularly high on Tyrese Halliburton as the, uh, coming in to win the most improved player of the year, because he has that type of potential, uh, for the Indiana Pacers. He went from the Kings, uh, trade deadline last season from the Kings to the Pacers and his numbers increased dramatically. And I think he's going to have the keys to the offense coming into this year. So I think he's a, a good candidate for most in play, uh, most improved player of the year. Uh, I mean, it, it, so everything uh, I, I sh- Terrell, what do you like here? So <clears throat> give me the under. I actually don't remember what I picked on this on our show. So I'm <laughs> kind of going these off the hip, but give me the under. And the reason is, is when you think about the tankathon and how bad it's going to be, teams are always under 20 wins. Like they can't set a line that low because it's yeah. comically bad. Like you'll have to bet the over at that point, but teams can easily go under 23 wins. And if you're really tanking and you're trying to get a big, then absolutely. And if you think about the person who they're trying to get, Victor literally fits what this team needs because he plays defense, but he cares more about his offense. He's very good at defense, but he cares more about his offense. And when you care about, and when you think of a Rick Carlisle coach team, all they care about is scoring. That's it. He's literally trying to trade people that don't like scoring, but play defense because he wants more scoring. That's why miles Turner has been on the trade block for like a year and a half now because miles Turner doesn't do enough scoring and he doesn't care about defense. So Victor just seems like the perfect person for him as somebody who is a really, really good scorer and just so happens to play defense. And so, yeah, I think that there's no aspirations for this team, especially after they lost out on Deandre Ayton over this off season where they were certain they were going to sign them. And then the Suns just said, all right, no, we'll hold on to them for a little bit. I'm not ready to part with my main piece yet for my side piece yet trying to keep my main piece with me. So yeah, I'm, I'm all over the Pacers under here. I just don't think they're going to be a good team and they could be one of the few sub 20 win teams in this league. Yeah. It seems like they're fairly committed to the rebuild. I was re- I was reading an article about the GM talking about it and how he he accidentally slipped and d- didn't exactly say tank but he didn't say rebuild either. So, I'll I'm with you on the under. I think there's multiple cases of either front either executives with teams or coaches from teams is signaling to their beat reporters like guys it's gonna be a long season. <laughs> so, I don't I know Moonal's higher on Tyrese, but I will say this. If there is a situation where Tyrese does have an injury or they're like, Oh, he could go. He could not go more than likely. They're just going to sit him. Yeah. Yeah. Anything close. A one in doubt tank Orlando magic 27 (laughs) and a half. I mean, again, this is another team. It's tough to get excited about They they have Banchero. They don't have anything else. Uh, Terrell, can you talk yourself into an over here on the magic at 27 and a half? Or are we going under here as well? Yeah, we can talk into it over. I've been this is the one that I've been bidded it uh bidded it on this whole off season because I've been back and forth on it and I'm not gonna take you know tease over the moon off side, but but I know his side. I've been back on forth on it. I'm going on to the over. And ultimately it's just because I think that everybody on this team has a green light and they're just not gonna care. Like this 
I talked about it last year where I said I felt like this was going to be a scrappy team and they were going to be in a lot of games and they were going to cover a lot of games for us. That didn't happen. But this year, they're going to be a scrappy <laughs> team. They're going to be in a lot of games and cover a lot of games for us. And they just have the talent with Ben Kiro coming in. And you talk about Franz Wagner, who nobody was really talking about that often. He got uh, the opportunity to be the guy, but through a whole bunch of energy injuries last year. And he really, like, that was a lot of good experience for him. And that's really the issue with this Magic team. They're young, but they have experience because they've been forced to play for so long because everybody kept getting hurt. So I'm expecting this team to take a step forward. I like the coaching there. I think that they can sneak a couple of the good teams. Give me an over on their win total. Oh, moon off. Hmm. I'm on the over here as well. Wow. Um, I like their squad. Like Terrell said, I mean, they have, they have guys that can hoop and put the ball in the basket here. Right. Talk about Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs. He just got cleared. I know he had a scare about a knee injury uh, a couple of weeks ago, but he's clear to play. He's going to be, he's going to be out again. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> he's going to be out Wagner, again. <laughs> Franz Wagner was out in Europe. He was playing Euro ball in the, in the Euro tournament uh, for Germany. So he's been in shape all off season. Uh, you know, we talked about Paolo Pancaro, the number one overall pick. Wendell Carter Jr. is back with this team, and they have some pieces off the bench as well. So I Mo think they're Wagner. Heading... Mo Wagner's still there. Mo, yeah, Mo Wagner's there as well. So <laughs> look, this team has has like Terrell said last year. We thought this team was going to cover games for us. Uh, I think this is a year with 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 the number one overall pick with the the squad that they do have, and I think they have a great head coach for this team as well. So I like the over on the Orlando Magic. Aren't number one picks usually worth like I don't know six, seven, eight wins? And they won 21 games last year. Uh, Sometimes over. It, this seems like a team filled with guys who don't understand full tank. Do, I don't know the word, the meaning of the word tank. Uh, I'm, you, you guys can't give the first over. I mean, he, you just got the first overall pick. You're supposed to convince me you're tanking again. This isn't Philly, right? Only, only OKC. Only OKC. Yeah, OKC, OKC is yeah. going to pull that. I, OKC is the new Philly. Again, I think some of these low. Level teams you have to take the over on, but I, I'm not. No. I'm, I, I'm not taking the over on the Magic. I'm going under as well, or uh, I'm actually I'm going against you guys. I'm yeah. taking the under. You guys make some good points, but I, you can I say still Terrell, don't see it. And Terrell and Moonoff make some good points. Yeah, and Ryan Ryan's <laughs> here for the ride. I just I just don't see it with the Magic at all. I know mm. you know to Ryan's point, you think adding the first overall pick uh, would help, but. Dummy logic here. I still, I just don't think they're still ready to win yet. And you could certainly can hit the over 27 and a half without being a good team, but I, I'm fading them. I'm, I'm going under the team. I'm taking the over on is our next team. Detroit Pistons over 28 and a half. I think they had a really good off season and I like year two of Cade Cunningham who showed me something year one. So that's a, like a low over under that I actually like the over on moon off. I saw you. I think you were shaking your head. Are you co-signing yeah. the Pistons over? Yeah, I'm co-signing with you. I think the one thing, the one trade that they did recently make for Bogdanovich from Utah kind of indicates to me that they want to win games right now. Um, they, they got Cade Cunningham last year. They got uh Jaden Ivy this coming upcoming season in the past draft. So this team is good. They have some hoopers. Um, and they're going to be a fun team to watch. And I think that there's a good mix of young talent as well as veteran uh, guys in this, on this team. I, I think that they can easily win 30 games and possibly who knows, this might be a team that could sneak into a play in tournament. I think they have that type of talent. Oh my God. It is funny. <laughs> Munaf said uh, it's, you know, trading, making that uh, Bogdanovich trade indicated they're trying to win games. That seems to be a big part of NBA handicapping, figuring out if teams want <laughs> right. to win games or not. No, so that's for real. Everybody doesn't want to win in the NBA. No, like, I know. I don't care. Everybody doesn't want to win. Weird, it's a weird league. Terrell, what about you? Are you are you uh, for us or against us here? I hate this total because mm. it's like, it's spot there, on, but it's not it? there. Yeah, it's like really spot on. I, I just don't have team. enough argument for it to go against it. Yeah. I I don't want to be on a whole bunch of overs, but I just don't have enough argument to go against it. They did add a lot of really good pieces. Now, Marvin Bagley's injury is slightly concerning. So I'll be interested to see. That's a lot of size that you're you're missing without him. But the best thing I can say is that they're gonna put up a lot of points and they're they're gonna let a lot of points happen too because Bogdanovich isn't gonna play defense. It's a lot of guys on that team that's not gonna play defense. So this could be a very high scoring team that just 
outscores a lot of other teams could be so i'm i'm with you i'll take the over on detroit i just don't have enough reasoning to not take it any right. concerns about little caesars overextending itself i'm seeing they're sponsoring the nfl <laughs> little caesars yeah. arena and yet all the little caesars pizza, in my pizza. areas have closed down so i'm wondering are they just a marketing company now yeah no it might be an east coast thing we oh, got, man. Still it's got little caesars scheme. over here they used to be in LA. They're no longer in LA. Uh, not that I'm a big fan, but just wondering oh, if they're. Come on, Ryan. Don't hurt our chances of getting a l- little Caesar sponsorship. Oh, I mean, five dollar piece. Yeah. Five dollar hot and ready. Come on. Gun to my head. I'm in. I'm somewhere in Iowa, and I gotta find a slice of pizza. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll go little Caesars. Give me the over on the pit. P- Pistons make Why, the playoffs. <laughs> wow, Ryan, save the hot take. Pistons make the playoffs. And we'll be we'll be giving really? out uh, locks here at the end. Maybe we'll do three locks for each conference. Uh, Washington well, Wizards uh, sitting at 35 <laughs> and a half. I think, you know, they got rid of John Wall. This feels like, hey, they're handing the uh, car keys, the old Bradley Beal. This is his time to shine. Got some decent guys around him. 10 years too late. Yeah, huh? maybe they missed the. It felt like they were delaying this decision for a long this, time. Oh, I'm sorry, Sean. So this is y'all show. I get it. But on the NBA gambling podcast, we refer to him as Bradley keep a bag Beal <laughs> because he keeps the bag on him. He just yes. keeps duffel bags full of money and cash on him. So it's Bradley keep a bag Beal. <laughs> Bradley keep a bag Beal. It's a good name. That's a good uh, tout nickname. Oh yeah, Bradley keeping the bag oh, yeah. Beal. Uh, I have I, a I have a running joke that I say that at some point in the season that the Trailblazers and the Wizards are just going to do a one for one swap Dame for Bradley Beal because they're both of their contracts are completely insane and they both do the exact same thing. Yeah, put up a bunch of shots, don't win you any playoff games. I that being said, I'm taking the Wizards over 35 and a half. Maybe I'm crazy, Terrell. How say you? No, I'm on the over as well, and it's really more of. I'm getting a healthy Bradley Beal for however long I may be getting them. And that's just, that's enough. And you think about what Kyle Kuzma was able to do for that wizard squad when he was the guy. So if Kyle Kuzma can kind of tap into that dog, Kyle Kuzma that I've been here for years talking about, it exists. There is a dog inside Kyle Kuzma. He may not come out all the time, but he does come out sometimes. So if they can get that guy to come out a lot more, uh, Porzingis is just kind of another guy there for me. I know they have big plans for him, but I'm not really too high on him right now. And Johnny Davis coming in from Wisconsin. That's another big, another, some size, another level of scoring. You have Rui who is still on this team and is a really, really good score. I think they have depth here. So yeah, I have uh, the wizards as a sneaky playoff team for me. Ooh, they got better moon off. Are you, are you higher on the, uh, this I think they just the got healthier. Yeah. Any anytime I see Will Barton on the roster, I want to run the other way. Oh. Uh, <laughs> poor this poor team, Will. Yeah, th- this team has some ball players on on this squad. Um, you know, Monte Morris and and obviously, like I mentioned, Will Barton they picked up from the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Bradley Beal, like you know, Terrell said, keep a bag Beal. He, you know, he's a he's a guy that could go out and score thirty every single night. But I like the young talent, right? You mentioned John, Johnny Davis, Danny Avdia is going to be another great piece for them. Mm-hmm. And Rui Achimura, when healthy, he could be, you know, one of the top three guys on this roster, I believe, because he just has that type of talent. So I'm going to lean with the over. I don't love it, but uh, I'm I'm not going to take it under, especially with the talent that they do have on this roster. I, c- I could see this team winning 38 to 39 games this upcoming season. And Kramer. the coaching, the coaching, Wes Unseld is a yeah. really, really good coach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say you don't often see basketball coaches who went to Johns Hopkins. As much as I'd like to say private school pussy, <laughs> chestnut checkers. Give me the over. All right. Uh, well, his dad was the Hall of Famer. Let's not forget yeah. he did have to play mm-hmm. ball at Johns Hopkins. Charlotte Hornets win total sitting at thirty six and a half over on the Great Win Bet. I, I mean, Lamelo Ball, Ubre already hurt. I, I'm I'm all in on the under on here. I know uh, research uh, flat Earth in the YouTube chat is saying he's all. He said he said try and find some alt unders on the Charlotte Hornets. I think Uh-oh. it could be a mm-hmm. rough I'm season right for now. them. Uh, Thirty six and a half is way too high for this team. I'm I'm on the under. Uh, Moon off. I'll kick it off with you. What do you got? Yeah, under all the way on the Charlotte Hornets. You talked about the Lamelo Ball injury. He already has an ankle issue. Miles Bridges, their best player last year, unfortunately fumbled the bag. You know, dealing with some off the court stuff um, with with the law and stuff. Um, <laughs> they got Gordon Hayward back. This team is a lot better when he is on on the floor. I but I just don't think there's enough for this team. I mean, when Dennis Smith Jr. 
is your backup point guard on this roster. I, that hey, gives me a lot of concern. Well, well, He's North, North Carolina. Carolina. He's North Carolina. He's North Carolina. He's North Carolina. Right. Yeah, but again, I just think like after that starting lineup, this bench is, is just not going to be very good. And it's funny that they brought back the head coach that they fired, I think, uh, like three, four seasons ago to be the head coach again. So I think there's some uh, there's some questions with this front office. And I think this is going to be one of the teams that are going to be tanking for sure to get Victor Services to probably uh, pair with LaMelo Ball. So I'm all over the under here. Moved uh, off? Or sorry, Terrell. <laughs> that is moving. I know. Yeah, no way. <laughs> I know. I'm here with three married men. Oh, but wow. back in your days, do you did you all never have somebody that you stopped talking to and then was like, oh, maybe I want to dip my toe back in the waters? <laughs> and you ain't never spun the block on your old thing before. That's all they did with Clifford. They just went and spun the block, <laughs> and so. I hate that I have to talk bad about the Hornets, especially when I'm in the Charlotte studio right now. And it's a whole bunch of Hornet stuff on the walls. I can't see it, but it's a whole bunch of Hornet stuff on the walls. But this team's going to be bad. They're going to be bad. They're going to be really bad. Because the issue with Clifford coming back in is because Clifford didn't get anything done when he had his guys in on the team. So people that actually committed to the defensive side, and he's a defensive head of coach, the people that actually committed to the defensive side of the ball are not there anymore. Nobody on this team plays defense. Nobody on this team cares about playing defense. Everybody just wants to run the floor and score, and that's going to be really bad for them. I think that they're going to struggle all season. And this, if there's an all-under, like he said, take it with the Hornets because does LaMelo Ball and Victor Wimby, does that not sound entertaining? Does that not (laughs) sound fun? Like, I see the highlights. I see it in Charlotte now. Everybody's like, yo, just go ahead and call the season and let's get this guy. So, yeah, I'm going ahead and call it. Take a all under, take whatever you can. This Hornets team is going to be bad, but LaMelo should look good. Kramer. I mean, but this is, you hire someone with familiarity for this mm. reason, right? You understand that he, 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 you've worked with him before. You understand he might know how to do a job or maybe un, unintentionally do a job. Because, like, to your point, hard nosed coaches who don't have their hard nosed guys tend to have teams that fracture and fall apart. So maybe it's a pretty, it's, it's like a next level tank job by the front office here mm. under. What I will say is that he's been a part of the organization since he left. So even though, you know, they moved on from that year, like he hasn't completely disappeared from this organization. He's been around the city. So all right, there was, got- a, there was a familiarity when, when Kenny Axon just straight up said, yeah, never mind, guys, I changed my mind. It's <laughs> easier to, for the city to believe that things are going to get better. If the guy who's telling you has been around for a little bit. You know what I believe in, Ryan? That No House Advantage is an awesome, dynamic fantasy sports platform. If you're not playing on No House Advantage, you got to get over there, especially with the NBA kicking off. Again, it's player props, but in DFS style. It's very fun just picking over unders uh, for for and against your favorite players. You can win up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in some of their contests. Or if you don't want to play in like the big GPP DFS style contests. You can just play against the house. Uh, you can win 20 X. You go five and zero oh on your player props. Again, NBA, also NFL, MLB, PGA, MMA, NASCAR. They got it all. And if you use our promo code SGPN over at nohouseadvantage.com, you get a first deposit match up to $25. That's nohouseadvantage.com promo code SGPN for a first deposit match up to $25. We're also brought to you by Babbel, addictively fun, bite-sized easy language lessons. Uh, you know, again, uh, Terrell's uh, mentioning that pointed out that we're all married, but what better way if, if you're trying to court a lady uh, that speaks a different language, what better way to impress them? If they're Spanish, French, Italian, German, then learning a little bit of their language, that kind of stuff goes a long way. Are. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I would uh, Terrell's probably fluent in 20 languages just from trying to, uh, you know, meet up with some ladies. Uh, the thing about Babbel is it's very easy. It makes learning a language fun because honestly, if you have the wrong teacher, if you're in high school and your Spanish class teacher personally hates you, goes out of your way to destroy your uh, seventh period, it's not fun. You're not going to enjoy it. But Babbel is the complete opposite of that, makes it fun. And you get 55% off your subscription. All you got to do is go to babbel.com slash SGP. That's B A B B E L.com slash SGP for up to 55%. Off your subscription, Babel language for life. Kramer, your New York Knicks are sitting at 39 and a half. Yay or nay on the Knicks this year? (laughs) I mean, 
it, you can have fun with it. I think, what did we do last year? Did we take the over moon off? Do you remember I, my, my, my always, always instant reaction on the New York Knicks uh, since Patrick Ewing's no longer playing Amari uh, or uh, Amari Stoudemire, no longer playing. These are, these are some of the good teams. That's all I have to hold on to that. Amari Stoudemire half year is still the greatest thing that's happened <laughs> in a long, long time for, under under. Wow. Why, why, why are you going to me first? Uh, first of all, clearly my strategy has been to copy <laughs> Moon off and Terrell. <laughs> Secondly, I'm always going to take the under on the Knicks. What am I excited about? Because they brought Brunson. a dog. I, I, Jalen Brunson. Yeah, yeah he's my a dog. dog. My, gosh. my uh, gosh. So to that point, I'm I'm actually taking the over here at 39 really? and a half. I think you bring in a guy like Jalen Brunson, and again, we've seen this from Thibodeau. He'll run these guys into the ground. He'll get you that 40 and 42, uh, and you know they'll be they'll be in like the playing game. So yeah, I'm I'm on the uh, I'm on the over 39 and a half. Just because I think, again, like things got a little wonky last year, but at, they at, won forty-one games last year. No, that's what I'm saying. Like I think they can still, I think they can get to that similar level. Um, you know, the year before that was when they clearly overachieved, but I think they underachieved last year and still got forty-one wins. So I'm on the over here for the Knicks. Moon off. I'm going with the under. Um, I feel like this team doesn't they what is the direction that they want to go in? Right. I know they're having a hard time bringing in key, you know, superstar talent to kind of revitalize the Knicks organization and, and uh, Madison square garden. But uh, there's, there's just no sense of identity with this team. And we know that Tom Thibodeau doesn't like playing the young guys when the young guys are the talent of this team, right? You have Jalen Brunson, RJ Barrett, but there's not much after that. I mean, Emmanuel quickly supposed to be the next thing for this team. It's just I, I'm not a believer in Tom Thibodeau as the head coach of this team, and I think that's what's going to set this team back because you need to bring in a coach that's going to utilize the talent that is on this roster. And I don't think Tom Thibodeau is that head coach. And I think there's going to come to a point where he might just lose a rock locker room if he hasn't already with all the young players that they do have. So I like the under on the on the New York Knicks here. I, I just don't think this is their year. Maybe next year, or the following year, when they bring in some more talent. But I think at least for this season, give me the under. Yeah, they should see about bringing Dable over, upgrading the uh, winning facility. culture. Get get some winning <laughs> culture in there. Ball. Get some yeah. fans. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm for that. Guy. Let's bring let's bring Dave's over as coach. I mean, Tib Tibbs is comically the opposite of Dave's in terms of like square peg, square hole, square pl- like. Th- 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 here's the thing about the Knicks: the Knicks will be bad forever until Dolan's gone. It does yep, feel like they much. have a Washington Commanders football team Redskins vibe to them. Uh, Jarrell, yep. what do you got? All right, so oh. huh, this is my dilemma mm. because one, I don't think the Knicks got any better. Uh, Jalen Brunson came in, I don't think they got any better. Did you remember what I said about the 7 2 guy in the draft yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Scoot Henderson right behind him? If you finish bottom of the league, you have a pretty good chance of getting one of those two guys. However, the Knicks suck so bad. Like they are so bad of an organization and so terrible that they can't even tank right. Yeah. So if I tell you to take the under, they're probably going to mess around and win. I said this on the show. They're going to mess around and win 41 games and not be in a playoff spot and not be in a position to to get one of the best players in the draft. That's how bad this organization is. I Tibbs has to go because he, like when I'll say, he doesn't play the young talent. You had Todd, Todd Gibson stealing minutes from Jericho Sims, and then Jericho Sims comes in at the end of the season against Joel Embiid, has a great game, and everybody's like, oh, my gosh, why wouldn't they play this guy all year? Well, uh, it's because he doesn't play the young talent. He doesn't have that trust in them. And so Emmanuel quickly, he'll probably average two minutes a game because he won't play him. Miles McBride, we might as well have traded all these guys. I don't know what the issue was trading these guys for Donovan Mitchell because he's not going to play them. He's not going to play these players. So this team is going to be bad. And somehow he's going to coach them to being a 40 win team. And we're not even going to tank properly. Give me the over. Let's go. I was going to say, they might be a fun <laughs> team to like bet like a, uh, like a win band, like between the uh, 38. Oh, and I already 40. gave it out. 40 oh, no. to 43 is 260. Oh, there you oh, go. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that's a sweetheart. New York Knicks right yeah, there. We'll get there. Chicago yeah. bulls. Their win total set at 43 and a half. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I don't know what to make of this uh, Bulls team. You know, I think I feel like they surprised a lot of people last year. Is this year a letdown year? But then they brought in some good guys, talent wise. Like I I could kind of see it going 
either way, but Zach Levine certainly look uh, um, uh, looking really good. I'm leaning over, but I could be talked out of it. Moon off. What are we yeah, doing? On this the was my best bet last year on the bulls to go over their win total. Um, and that was with DeMar DeRozan for a stretch playing at an MVP level uh, for the Chicago bulls. I think this is a year where they do kind of take a step back um, just because the one main factor, and we talked about this on the pod this morning was that Lonzo ball is going to be missing significant time for the yeah. Chicago bulls uh, with that knee injury that he is dealing with. Right. We're not even sure if he's going to be back this year at all at all. And he's one of their better defensive guys, him and Alex Caruso. Now you have the second year guy in Io DeSumo. That's going to be the starting point guard for this team. Pretty good off the bench, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to carry this team throughout the season in the absence of Lonzo ball. Zach Levine just got paid uh, by the Chicago bulls. He's good. Now he doesn't have to go out and prove his worth for the Chicago bulls team for him to secure that bag. Like he did in the off season. So he might be like, okay, I got paid. I don't need to do much now. We're expecting regression from DeMar DeRozan as well. Um, and I just think that the, the competition of the teams above them and some of them below them are going to be better. I think that one team that is going to suffer is going to be the Chicago Bulls. So I, and I don't believe in Billy Donovan as a head coach either. So I think the bulls, I'd like the under on the Chicago bulls this season. Yeah. You're making some good points. Remember when he cried to get his job back in Florida. <laughs> Never will I ever bet on over with this guy. Um, if any of his players find out about that, so Ryan, you're on the he under. He begged then? his to get his job back. You remember that? Fucking weird, loser. weird times. And yeah, the Lon, Lonzo. Why? <clears throat> Everyone has to be so delicate. It, Lonzo Ball is not playing this year. Um, like, well, there will, there will, he's gonna play. He's just, there was a report that came out that he was ahead of schedule. So I don't know. <laughs> I love the head of schedule. Reports. Yeah, it's very that. vague, but he just had surgery on the What is the schedule? What and is the schedule? And then they're like, okay, we're going to start taking. He, all right, so two. September 29th, he had surgery. Uh, I'm reading a, a, a third party doctor's uh, analysis of this. And at that point, it was stated that he was going to miss at least a few months. So we, we think, best case, he's back in February. Yeah, so well, they re they're point, re like evaluating him after the first week. And I think at that evaluation state is going to be whether he starts like ru running and like it's running and stuff face. like that. And then he has to get to game where he can start practicing. And then he has to get to where he can actually play in a game. So it's a long road for Lonzo here. And honestly, Lonzo is the floor general of this team. You talk about the Draymond green for what Draymond green does for the warriors. Lonzo does all of that for the Chicago bulls. He guards the best player at all times. He is the point guard and make gets everybody to their spots and he can hit an open shot if needed. It's the bulls Under. flow chart. Easy. We go back to the bulls flow chart is Lonzo playing. Yes. No. All right. We fade the bulls. Are the bulls <laughs> playing a top seven team in the NBA? Yes. No. All right. Oh, they are. All right. We fade the bulls. They can't beat the good teams and they struggle with the bad teams without their floor general. Yep. It's a pretty easy under. This sounds a lot like the AFC South flow chart yes. need to make, but just for the NBA, you I just like need it. to know yep. who they're playing and, and you know, to what degree their uh, motivation is Atlanta, Hawks. Miami minus six opening mm -hmm. day, lock it up early. Atlanta Hawks playing uh 46 or their win total sitting at 46 and a half this season. Uh, again, I'm also, I, I'm going to go under here. I still don't think, I don't know. They just don't seem like a, they have enough defense, but maybe that's going to come up in the playoffs and not the regular season, but I, I'm, I'm going to go under here. Moon off. How say you on the Hawks? I think there are going to be some, maybe some growing pains early on in the season between Dejounte Murray and Trey young trying to figure yeah. things out because those are two ball dominant guys, right? The one thing I do like is that Deandre Hunter is healthy to start the season. You never know with him. But I think the one biggest concern I have about this team is their bench because it's it's Bogdanovich who's injured a lot of times for this Hawks team. It's Aaron Holiday, it's Justin Holiday, and then it's Onyeke Okungwa for this uh, bench. I'm not sold on this bench, and I think that teams that don't have a bench are do suffer again throughout the season. If one type of injury keeps you know Dejounte Murray or Trey Young out for two to three weeks, that can instantly kind of flip the win total for you. So. I think this is that they're they're probably a 44 win team. They're probably going to be in that seven eight spot. So I'm going to go under with this team. Terrell, you seem to be in agreement, right? Under. 
Yeah, I'm on under here. And it was the same reasoning. I think that they're just barely going to come up short of this. I think this is the Trey Young year. And I think Trey Young is going to have a great year. I think he could potentially be the scoring champ this year. I've already given that bet out at 10 to 1. And I know Moon off co signed that as well. Yeah. But because he's getting so many more opportunities in that offense with DeJounte Murray there, somebody else that can take some of that pressure, somebody else that can handle the ball kind of a little bit what Jalen Brunson was for Luca and where Jalen Brunson was handling the ball, at least up the court. And then Luca was coming off ball and able to go and do some isolation plays. I think Trey Young's going to be a little bit of that same of playing off ball a little bit more. And so now I'm looking at that defense, which is absolutely terrible. There's only one person on that team that commits to defense at this point, And that's Deandre Hunter. And if you look at the teams, we just talked about the Pistons. You think that they're going to score a lot. We talked about the Magic. We think they're going to score a lot. We talked about the Pacers. The Pacers are going to be bad, but they're going to score a lot of points. And so they're playing all these teams, and I just think that teams are going to score and do whatever on them. And a couple of those losses are going to come back to bite them when it means the most. So, yeah, give me an under on the win total. That's really the only reason why I'm not on Trey Young MVP a lot more than I should be is because I don't think they're going to be. A yeah. If, you, if you're at seven or eight seed, you're not going to win MVP. Ryan, do you go against the three wise men? No. AKA Terrell. No, it's Nian a, Munaf? no, I, I would. Uh, <laughs> no, I, again, they, they, they won 41 games last year, right? Yeah. I don't, TM, I don't see TMZ lame take. Did they, but I, did they I don't get seven see, th- games better Yeah. And to their point? Like this, this might be, a, it sounds like this is a fun team. Once they make the playoffs, they yeah. can maybe compete in a series well, because, and, and because I, of their ceiling. I but. like I like Moonoff's point too with the Murray bringing in Murray and you have guys who, you know, these NBA guys. It takes them a while. If one guy's already ball dominant, you bring in another ball dominant guy. It's like two dogs. If one dog, you know, a lot is of used ball to, dominance talk here. Well, sure. Yeah, if, if you're yeah. ball dominant as a dog, and then you bring in another dog, it's like, yo, give me that ball. Like they. It takes them a while to I, figure out a way I to play. I can tell together. you, I had we brought a new dog. They're both female, and yet one of them is trying to be ball dominant by humping the other one. Very confusing. <laughs> Explain that to your eleven-year-old. Why is the one girl dog humping the other? Uh, anyway, Hawks under. Cavs. They're set at uh, forty-seven and a half. The Cleveland mm. Cavaliers. They got a strong young court. Uh, brought in Donovan Mitchell. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say over. I think they had enough going on for them last year. Added in the right pieces. I'm I'm going to take the over 47 and a half. Terrell, what about you, Cleveland? How are we feeling this year? Yeah, this is these are my guys. I love yeah. this Cleveland team, and this is it. Just seems like this is the year that they can put it together. Donovan Mitchell went to a team that is actually defensive focused, so he can just do what he wants because you have the Twin Towers and Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. Yeah, down Mobley. Low, I meant who, to mention. Both of them really great. Mobley, we talked. We talked about Mobley. He's potential defensive player of the year candidate. So, Donovan Mitchell, one of the worst defenders in the league, and not like by far not close. One of the worst defenders in the league. Bogdanovich, his old teammate, probably gives him a run for his money there. He can just do what he wants offensively. He can use all of his energy offensively, and I think Donovan can actually have a really good year for his childhood team. Well, quote unquote childhood team. He was a LeBron fan, but still, yeah. So. I'm I'm here. I think that they're absolutely well coached with JB Bickerstaff. That was my 40 to one coach of the year play last year that went down to the wire and was a Monty Williams away from cashing. So <laughs> yeah, give me, give me the Cavs to hit this over. I think that there is a possibility that the Cavs are a really, really good team in this East coast in this East division um, conference and not just, you know, somebody that looks nice. Yeah, they they seem to have a good base. And you mentioned the Monty Williams coach of the year. Uh shout out to Scott Rational Reichel, who encouraged mm-hmm. me to get a hold as as much money I, I could have liquidity wise and put it all in Monty Williams coach of the year. He's like, it's still a great bet at three to one. Just everything you have on Monty Williams coach like of the year. Two hours into meeting Scott in person. He's just we'll go bet on this immediately. Yes. Uh, He's bullying me into Monty Williams coach of the year. The great. win total went up four wins with, with Mitchell joining the team. Is that enough? Because I, mm. I I don't I don't like to bet again. Like the, but he's the opposite of Billy Donovan in my books. Mm. Not a bitch, dude. Oh. I want to bet on. Yeah, no, I I uh, Munoff, where no, are you at with the, this no, number? The adjustment's a little scary, but forty-seven. I'm, I'm guessing Munoff's going to be on the over, and I'm going to be on the over. Yeah, I like the <laughs> over here. Uh, I mean, you guys Good talked guess, about this right? roster, right? When you have Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. <laughs> kind of anchoring the defense down low. You can, your guards can go out and do whatever they want, right? With Donovan Mitchell, like you, I mean, like uh, Terrell said, 
he didn't, he doesn't play defense and you know, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen, but they're, they're going to be your defensive guys. Karis Levert on this team as well. And let's not forget last year with all the injuries that this team dealt with, with Colin Sexton missing time and Ricky Rubio, those guards, it, they're, even though they're not on the team anymore, they still found a way to win games. And it was really on the back of Darius Garland. Now you add a superstar player like Donovan Mitchell, who's can now is going to go out and just tell him to go out and score 25 to 28 points per night and let those bigs go, do their thing down uh, in the paint. I, I like this uh, over and I like the head coach like Terrell talked about. So give me the over on the Cavs. Mm. My record is looking perfect right now. <laughs> Well, you did all your uh, NBA insight and hard work is paying off, right? Yep. Toronto Raptors, 47 and a half is the win total. I'm taking the over and I'm going to call the Toronto Raptors the new uh, San Antonio Spurs, the oh. modern San Antonio Spurs, where they're just, they're okay. always just going to be competent, right? Like they're always going to be pretty high level, probably maybe some years in the mix for a championship, but it's going to take a while for them. To really bottom out, so I'm I'm on the over here of the uh, Eastern Conference Spurs, Toronto Raptors. Terrell, how say you on the Spurs? So I actually still have my notes from the sharp off still up on my screen, mm. and I had a Raptors 21 bet to be the one seed mm. in the Eastern Conference. So I'm everything you said. They and I like that you know that analogy. They are like this you know the San Antonio Spurs. And Nick Nurse, great coach, one of the top three coaches. And they play defense. All, doesn't matter who's there. Doesn't matter what. Nurse gets everybody to play defense on this squad. They're going out there. They have the ability to score from the outside. They have the ability to score on the inside. And they have Scotty Barnes, who I think, and I'm putting my bid in for one of most improved, even though, you know, he's a high draft pick. But I think he can take a depth for leap moving over into more of a point forward position than a small forward position, handling the ball more, going out there and just picking his spots. I like this Toronto team. I think this is a team that can sneak up and they won. What, what was it? 46 48. games last year, 48 games last year. And that was a year that they dealt with injury issues. They dealt with COVID for like the first half of the season. And they put on a run in the second half when they were fully healthy and had everybody playing and Nick nurse was playing his starters 45 minutes a night. Where did where what year? So I, if if this nugget is true, the only year they went under in the past ten years was the year they they homed in Tampa. Yep. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. are we, what are we talking about here? Yeah. If they yeah. have a in the NBA, if you have a great coach, it's going to be. I mean, think about imagine uh, Thibodeau and uh, Nurse playing chess. Thibodeau might not know all the moves. You know what I mean? It's that kind of battle. He thinks he's playing. Say, I don't know if Thibodeau even has all the pieces on the nice. board. He might <laughs> just throw all the pawns away because he says that they're too young and too, they don't do nothing. They just move forward. I got all these other pieces that can go crazy. So he probably just threw I, all the pawns off the board. I feel like he would like the pawns though. Very simple, not yeah. complicated. Yeah, they get <laughs> very, <laughs> very expendable. He would just like want a board with all pawns. Yeah, what the, what the fuck are these bishops for? <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't need your queens with your fancy moves. <laughs> Yeah, get this, just, get one, this rook, one move up. That's it. Get this rook bullshit out of here. But like, if this was a college program and they were destroyed during like the COVID years, we would be like, that's a reason to bet on them coming out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Toronto. This is actually the only one that it was I like the first it. half of the season that, and it was one game I know for certain where they were missing like five, six, seven guys with COVID. And you got to think. Now they have fans in the building. Yeah. Like this is their this is their return game because they couldn't have fans in the building last year. This is the actual return season for them. So everybody else that got all the boosts for having their home crowd last year, Toronto's getting that this year. Moon off. Are you pro Canada? Yeah, pro Canada. I mean, not going to repeat everything you guys just said there because that was pretty much my handicap and what Terrell just said there about fans being back in the building for the Toronto Raptors. I think they have one of the best uh, home court advantages in the entire league next to golden state. Um, and, 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 you know, Toronto, I think is probably second or third on that list as far as home court goes. So this nucleus of guys have been together for several seasons. Now they have that chemistry, a great head coach. You have a front office, not a, not, not afraid to make a move to improve the team. They went out and got Gary, Gary Trent jr. Last year it was a knockdown three point shooter. I love the over for the Toronto Raptors. And I also uh, love that Ter uh, Terrell found that 20 to one for them to be the one seed. Yeah, no, I mean, why not the Raptors? Right. As far as 20 to one, one seed, like they, they Sean. have, they, they're well coached and they have top level talent. That's really kind of all you need. Nine and hit one. 16 to one last year. 
Nine Miami and, Heat was sixteen to one last year. Nine and one to, to, in the in their overs over the last ten. That's almost as good as my lock record in the NFL, Sean. <laughs> Laser focus. Brian, speaking of the National Football League, if you want to watch the NFL, including the NFL Red Zone, college football, pro football, you got to sign up with Fubo TV. Hundreds of channels, including live sports and entertainment, for a fraction of the price of cable. Watch on all your devices, never miss a game or an episode of your favorite shows. No contract, no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. Plus, right now, you can try Fubo TV for free. For seven days and get 15% off your first month. Just go to Fubo TV.com slash SGP. That's Fubo TV.com slash S G P. We're also brought to you by Odds Trader. Again, Odds Trader is your one stop shop when it comes to comparing all the major books, getting the best sign up codes and the best promos, plus projected uh, game day weather, key stats, injury reports. You need that projected game day weather for the NBA. Uh, handicap and play by play updates, live scores, bet <laughs> tracking. They got it all. Just go to odds trader.com slash blue wire. That's O D D S trader.com slash blue wire. Odds trader, the number one site for all your game day bets. Home stretch and then locked city. Here we come. This team definitely in uh, in the running for under for me as a lock. Uh, Brooklyn yeah, Nets. We got to the Sixers already. Not yet. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, how dare you? Uh, how dare you, Terrell? Uh, under on the Brooklyn Nets again. Like the the fact that they both desperately tried to get out of there. Uh, that, that Kyrie and Kevin Durant did everything they could to get out of there. Then they wanted the coach uh, axed, and then they became friends again. They had to sit down. This is just bad vibes through the roof. Who knows? Maybe Kyrie's going to take another. Uh, you know, sojourn where he just takes a couple of weeks off and it's uh, not explained in any shape or form. I, I just <laughs> well, he doesn't have co- the, is the COVID excuse is gone. Yeah, so no, now, the COVID excuse. How is he going to miss fine. games now? And He's, not, he finds yeah, a new way to him yeah. and Ben Simmons are maybe working things out. Oh, figuring, and of course, Ben Simmons haven't even gotten and to ben of Simmons. course Ben Simmons. <laughs> ben Simmons so under did I know. I I completely forgotten the guy was in the league. When you take a year off for sadness. <laughs> I kind of forget you're in the league, dude. The uh, if you listen to that podcast <laughs> where he was on, like he 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 didn't think oh any gosh. he he took no blame or responsibility for what happened to me, which shows shows the insane level of denial Ben Simmons is living in. This guy is, I mean, imagine it's like if you had cancer and you started uh, your solution was smoking three packs a day. That's what bringing in Ben Simmons to this already <laughs> cancer ridden locker room. There's no way they're winning 50 games. It's it's toast. Now I know. Um, shout out to you guys on the NBA show. I, I'm pretty sure Terrell was on it. Maybe Scott as well. I forget. But you guys uh, got some great prices on the mm-hmm. Nets to win the championship because you know essentially calling uh, or or calling Kevin Durant's bluff, saying like, dude, they're yeah. not going to trade you. Why would they? And the you know price shot up. I, I forget the to one. Yeah, yeah. So. Walk us through that, and then whether or not you like the win total. I mean, obviously, getting those prices are great, but I'm on the under for the win total. Yeah, as soon as so as soon as the information came out, because we already knew Kyrie was looking for a trade. When the information came out that KD wanted to trade as well, the market tanked and it dropped the Nets. I think as further the furthest that we saw it was 55. I got in around I think 36 uh, to one, and ultimately I just said, look, if they don't trade these guys, or if they trade you know, just Kyrie and Kevin Durant ends up staying, they're still going to be like 15, 16 to one to win the title, something around that, maybe even better odds, less odds than that, because it's Kevin Durant. It's Kevin Durant. And so, of course, a hundred percent, the reasoning was, all right, let's just hold on to the ticket. And when the season starts and everybody's on this roster, we can sell it. Then we can wait until they have a good season and then sell it. And that's ultimately where I'm going with this win total because I am on over. Okay. And it's so much turmoil that it's gonna work. Like it's gonna like all that all that turmoil in the organization is gonna cancel each other out, and they're just gonna come out and be a really good team. And when we talk about yes, bringing in Ben Simmons, one bringing in defense, like the most important thing is defense. But also, he doesn't have to shoot the ball. You finally, finally, the Nets got a player that doesn't feel like they have to shoot the ball. Everybody wants to shoot the ball on this net scene except Ben Simmons, so he can really just be fine and saying fine. I'm only going to take one, two shots a game because everybody else want it. Moon so, off. Please tell me you're on the under here. Yeah, I'm on the under here. Ooh. Um, 
I think for this Brooklyn Nets team, number one head coach is a huge red flag for me. I don't believe in Steve Nash as a head coach. Um, and you guys talked about the cancers in the locker room, right? And there might be a period where Kyrie Irving just says, I'm out for personal reasons for maybe oh a couple gosh. games at a time. And yeah, on on paper, this is a good squad. It's a great squad, but there's injury concerns with a lot of guys with leg injuries, with uh, ankle injuries and things like that. But it, I think further than that, for me, for the Brooklyn Nets team, it's like for them, it's probably going to be, let's just win enough games to get into the playoffs. Yeah. And at that point, I think it's going to be difficult for a team that if everybody's healthy on this squad for them to go out and beat this team in, in seven games. So I think that's what I think the mentality might be. So I don't think they care about getting a number one seed or a two seed, three seed. They just get into the playoffs just win enough games. And then I think it's going to be their mindset might be, Hey, it's going to be difficult for an opposing team to beat us in a seven game series. So give me the under. And I think that Ben Simmons thing, I think again, you're bringing a guy like that, but I still feel like there's going to be some growing pains, him having to be alongside Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. I think one of my biggest things for a win total is just one looking at the season before and who all got minutes. And luckily for them, because they didn't have Kyrie for a lot of that season, they didn't have KD for a good portion, no heart and definitely no Ben Simmons. There's a lot of guys on that bench that got a lot of valuable NBA playing minutes. That is a good. So now that's like, it's like college. It's like college. When you say, Hey, we're, we're returning this amount of starters. Well, they're returning a bunch of players that got starting minutes last year. And so they should be able to add a lot more depth to that team this year. So. No, I, I I do like that angle, but I'm still on the under. Ryan, I'm, <laughs> I'm assuming you're on the under. F- uh, fade New Jersey, or now Brooklyn, I guess. But I, I think I think it's fair to to wonder, you know, just because Steve Nash played with great coaches doesn't, and I think he's a great mind, but it, it's clear he doesn't have he's what it takes bad. to be an NBA head coach. And if there was ever a team that needed a coach. It's this team for all the reasons you highlight. I mean, Durant doesn't get enough credit for being, you know, he's the emotionally stable one, but th- <laughs> there's nothing. So, I mean, he, the dude, I mean, the dude has burner accounts because these millennials, <laughs> they can't handle it. And all the way back to your accountability. Uh, like, I, I know it's, it, we're skirting a, a dangerous topic here with mental weakness versus mental health. But when you're a professional athlete, and I'll stand on this statement. The reason you got to the top of the mountain is because you're mentally fucking strong. And Ben yep. Simmons showed that he's not mentally strong, even in times where it wouldn't have been difficult to be mentally strong. So whether or not he's back, he creates a weirdness around this team. He creates questions that need to be answered. The fact that he's doing sit down interviews, talking about how he's excited to be back. What the fuck are we talking about here? <laughs> excited to be back for another season. Hit the days of our league music, Sean, because this is what you do for a good trailer, right? You get us excited over under games played Ben Simmons this year. I'm going to set it at, I'm going to set it at 40, one and a half. How like many games does he play? The hourglass. <laughs> so are the days of our league. Will he attempt to free throw? Will he attempt to jump shot? Will Ben Simmons overcome his fear of playing on a basketball court? Tune in. Will Ben Simmons cash the 22 and a half games to hit a three pointer? <laughs> they, they wear black. They're going to be the villains. Like people already find Kyrie to be off putting. People already find Durant's view of the fans to be a little bit off putting. That's off-putting. why they're going to be good. The and villains, maybe you're the right. villains going to win. Maybe you're right in that sense. But they, also, they can be to, a true... to, to that point, too, like I don't think they care about home court advantage no, because their the fans problem. hate them. They were the seven seed last year. <laughs> right? Not... Like, uh, I mean, are. Are, are the Brooklyn Nets fans going to be really inspired? Like, hey, yeah, well, let's go cheer for the guys who hate the team and wanted both tried to get out of the city. Look, yeah. if they if if this team plays all their games, yeah, and they play to the peak of their abilities, we're talking about a team that could very easily be a one seed, and you guys could be sitting on some fat, fat, uncomfortable stacks of cash uh, come the playoffs. I, I just think there's so many so many things that can go wrong, right? We're playing catch with a full size football in a China shop. Yeah, we no, all know how to throw a football. We all know how to catch a football, but every once in a while mistakes happen. I and think the just, risk here is just so high Yeah, because what ha- a little bit of, I kind of was curious on what research research flat earth has to say as he's oh, probably he's a big Kyrie close, guy. He's close personal friends with Kyrie, but uh, uh, th- there's no, you can't, if anyone, any respectable 
uh, uh, earmuffs, Terrell. If any respectable no. handicapper okay. is gonna sit here and tell you to take the over on the nuts, <laughs> they're smoking fucking crack. Go Knicks. <laughs> But yeah, Ryan also I'm, likes the other. And shout out to Scott uh, Reichel for having an old school Nets he's jersey legit, and being a true legit Nets, fan. Nets fan. No, someone, yeah, he's a he's a legit Nets fan. As someone it's who actually watched, very yeah. concerning for how long he's been a Nets fan. <laughs> Fun fact: uh, used to go to a lot of Nets games when I was buying my first car, sitting in a, a Honda dealership for hours. I watched them get their ass beat by the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, shout out to Vince Carter and uh, Art. Well, Richard Jefferson now fellow a uh, coworker over here on Blue Wire. Oh yeah, uh, he was part of that game as well. All right, Miami Heat, Sean. Miami Heat, uh, forty nine and a half. My takeaway is oh, over dog over uh, yeah, dog. It's it's tough to dog. take. <laughs> I I just can't take an under on a Jimmy Butler team. He's Michael Jordan's kid. Because especially because of how <laughs> hard they play, I understand. I I feel like uh, Munaf and Terrell might be on the under because they kind of whiffed on some big free agents and oh. didn't improve their team. And the East is top heavy. That's the argument against the uh, over, I think. But uh, I, that being said, Jimmy Butler, all time dog. I'm I'm on the over. What about you, Munaf? Am I did I nail it? Are you going under here? Or are you over? I'm on the over. Okay, I love nice. the Miami Heat. Uh, Let's go. You know this. Terrell Terrell nailed it last year as them being the number one seed. And it's pretty much the same roster that that that's back for this team, right? And I think last season health was a big concern for this team as well. And they still found a way to take the Boston Celtics, I believe to seven games uh, for a trip to the finals. I believe if I'm not mistaken, but uh, you get Kyle Lowry back. He missed a lot of games last year for this team with personal reasons. Uh, Tyler hero just got paid. I think he's going to bounce back after having a bad season last year. Same thing with Duncan Robinson. And like you mentioned, Jimmy (laughs) Butler, just one of the best two way players in the NBA. I think he's more committed on the defensive side of the basketball versus on the offense. Same thing with Kyle Lowry. These guys play defense. And again, you have the best head coach in the league. I personally think in the era exposure still leading this team. Yeah. This team, I think is going to be a top three seed again in the Eastern conference. For that reason, they have to win at least 50 games here. And I think they're going to go out and do that. This might be another team where you want to take a look at the alt uh, alternate win totals to go over for this team. And I love everything about it. Again, you have Pat Riley in that front office. Who's not afraid to go out and make a move to improve this team. And let's not forget. They also have victory Oladipo on that uh, in that second unit. Who's a guy that can come off the bench and score anywhere from 15 to 17 points a night for you. I know he's been dealing with injuries over the past two seasons, but he looks like he's finally healthy, ready to contribute minutes for this Miami heat squad. I like the over 49 and a half for this team. Yeah. And, and don't rule out Miami. You mentioned like make it a move. Miami is always a, a, a fun place to force your way out of. Cause yeah. inevitably one of these big stars are going to get unhappy. Don't like their situation. Ask out. And you know, the taxes, the lifestyle, it, Miami is like a very appealing place to request a trade do if you're an NBA player. So I, I think that is always a nice uh, carrot they have hanging around. Also, them. not that it's a huge like scheduling imbalance, but they do have a tremendously garbage division. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Terrell, are you on the over as well? Yes, I am on over. Let's so go. the the tough the tough thing about the East is that you have legitly three to four spots where you can have fifty win teams. So you gotta pick your you gotta pick your spots very selectively. You can't really start getting over too many overs on this East because while they're all good, everybody can't be a 50 win team. And Miami just kind of fits the profile. Like yeah. the great head coach, if they're healthy, they're one of the top teams. And even if they're not healthy, because they weren't healthy last year and they were still a 50 win team. So it's yeah. like it's kind of hard to bet against this Miami squad and Ultimately, I got more of a sweat than I wanted for that uh, number one seed overall last year. 16 to 1. Shout out to that cash. Ka-ching. Um, so oh my God. the issue, the issue is that are they gonna stay healthy? Is is the injury gonna be a big injury? Because normally it's just nicks here or there, hamstring, anything like that. Is the injury that comes gonna be a big injury that forces somebody out for the entire season? That's where this this kind of falls over, but they have everything. They have the depth. Victor Oladipo talked about earlier. He was one of the best defenders in that Celtics series. Like he was one of the best on ball defenders. So he's really big coming back. Missing PJ Tucker, but I think they'll be all right. Give me Miami over. You got the little dog bark. That's Oladipo, and then play the regular, and that, and then the, and then and then, and then that's Jimmy Butler talking to each other. <laughs> 
God. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we got three left. Boston Celtics 52 and a half to me. Oh, under. Yeah. I under. mean, Kramer, you're on the under as well <laughs> as, as narrative guys. This is just, you know, whatever's going on with the head coach, that's huge. And I, I think it just brings unnecessary drama. They still have a very good team, but uh, I, I think it gives them enough excuses and enough reasons to lose a couple games. They probably shouldn't uh, have lost. Again, very talented team. Got to the final. Oh, they do that on their own. They don't need an excuse. That's to do also that. they true. They do that yeah. all on their own. So Austin loves to lose games they shouldn't. Yeah, they and and you give them the coaching excuse. I think it's just going to add up to some extra unnecessary losses for them. So I'm on the under. Terrell, it sounds like you're on the under as well. Oh, this is my best bet. Oh, let's go. This is this is this, this is, is also lock, lock potential lock for this. Me. Let's just let's just throw out that I just don't like the Celtics organization as a whole. Just let's just throw that out. Mm. And let's just throw out that the Celtics are also unreliable, <laughs> completely unreliable team to bet on. But you have to think. Last year they hit they didn't even no, they didn't even hit this. I think they had 52. 51. 51. 51. They had 51. And they had the greatest second halves of the year of any NBA team has ever seen after All-Star. Like one of the greatest. I'm talking about covering everything, winning games, doing all of that. I, I lost a lot of money on them the second half of the year because I kept fading them. Yeah, So I know. Trust me, I know. They were really, really good. There's no way they were repeat that. They don't repeat that kind of success in the second half of the season. If they get off to a slow start like they did last year, this is going tumbling way under like it did last year. I don't think this team is really that like anything too, too special. They're a good team, but they have their flaws like anybody else. And 53 and a half wins. That's that's a lot. So yeah, give me the under. Bring it home, Munaf. This team last season post all-star break, 17 and five. I don't think that's sustainable. We talked about the head coach. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, they also lost Robert Williams, their best defensive player. He's going to be out at least till December for this team. Maybe yeah, yeah. what do you do at January. center? Yeah. So they have how Al Horford there. He he's a great, he's a great veteran, but I don't think he has, he possesses the size to slow down guys like Joel Embiid, who he did have some success against last season. But again, you still have to deal with Giannis. You still have to deal with some other bam out of bio, these type of bigs in the Eastern conference. And I just don't think that's going to line up very well for the Boston Celtics. They brought in Danilo Gallinari. Who's already gone for the season. Who I think tore his ACL or had a significant knee injury. Um, and I think this team is going to regress back. They, I think this win total, when it opened up at 55 and a half was really predicated on the success they had getting into the NBA finals. But if you kind of take a look at their pathway to the NBA finals, they had a lot of injury luck along the way, right? With Chris Middleton injury, um, and, and the other injuries that the opposing Tyler teams had. Hero. Yeah. Tyler. Yeah. So, and again, so I, I think that was, was and that, that, that from going from assistant coach to a head coach, it's a completely different ball game. And I think there's going to be a lot of talk about the whole Ima Yudoka situation with the head coaching. They have great talent on this team, no doubt, but I think they are going to take a step back. And again, like we talked about some of these teams that have improved are going to come after them because now Boston has that target on their back because they were the Eastern conference uh, champions last year. They're going to get the best effort from uh, those opposing teams. I got this at 55 and a half. I still love the under 53 Ooh. and a half for this team sharp and shout out to the new head coach, Joe Missoula. Is this correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. West Virginia. Cut. He, uh, he came uh, from the same high school that brought us both uh, cousin mush. And I'm, uh, I'm who the fuck was the DB who played at Boston College who was on Blue Wire for a second? He was on our show. Oh, Antoine Bethea? No, no. No, we'll we'll figure. I'll figure out his name in a second. Anyway, he's from Rhode Island, but here's the here's the problem. He the, the experience once again lacking. I, I I thought you'd be interesting and interested in this as a coach. He's coached at uh, Glenville State where he was an assistant. Okay. Fairmont State where he was an assistant. Maine Red Claws, where he was an assistant. He was then the head coach at Fairmont State, went back, and then he's been on the bench for a couple of years. That this come on. I, I understand we've had a couple hits with young Spolstra, right? It's worked before. Too young to deal with the situation like well, this. And there's a, Clear there's a ton under, of drama. Too. I, what I would ask too is what is a good head coach worth in the NBA? Because this line has only adjusted a win or so. So it, it seems like the the vast majority of the betting market, there was a little bit of a, oh, this guy got in trouble. We better bet the under, but then it, it didn't move. No, so the line didn't even move because it's, of that. Exactly. It the, didn't the move line had time. already moved because people were betting the under, because why would you ever set an NBA so, total this high? So I would say there's a lot of good reason here to, uh, to take, take the under. 
right? Oh yeah. Let's, right, let's go. Let's go. Uh all right, last two. Milwaukee Bucks, fifty two and a half. As much as I'd want to fade this Bucks team, uh, they got Middleton back, uh, healthy. They, well, well, oh, well, is he healthy? He, or he's no? gonna news, miss the first couple news, weeks. Yeah, news just broke on two hours ago that said that he's definitely missing uh, two the first few weeks for sure. Oh, I thought he was. Him. I thought he was good to go. Wow, yeah, we just right. got the news this morning. This uh, is like this was he mentioned it during media day that he thought he might not be ready for the season, but everybody just like it was like, oh, you're just kidding. Like you'll be fine. You've been out, you've been out since the playoffs. You're a reason that you, you didn't make it to the next round. Like everybody was like, you'll be fine, but no, no, he's really like <laughs> not all the way there. And they said he's gonna be a few weeks. So all right. It kind well, of what- makes me waver a little bit, but I'm sticking with my pick. What's what's your pick, Terrell? What do you got? Oh, Bucks over 52. Yeah. Over 52 and a half. Uh so you got to think this Bucks team just wins games. Yeah, and they're they're very good in the I, regular season. They're super motivated. Obviously, I would like Middleton for the entire season, but I'm with you. I'm still mm-hmm. on the over at 52 and a half. So I think the number I got to figure out what the exact number is. But when Middleton, Holiday, and Giannis are in the lineup, they're like some 80 percent win percentage at this point. Like it's insane how good they are when all three of them are playing. And to add my biggest critique of this team last year they addressed in the off season slightly by adding more depth to this team, adding more people that can play drafting Marlon Bochamp in the draft and having somebody that can come in year one and be able to add another depth piece, a scoring piece to them. Pat Connaughton going to be healthy this year. He's another good scoring piece coming off that bench. They have size. So yeah, I think this is, I think this is a year where we don't overthink it. The bucks are normally a 60 win team when everything goes well for them. This number is way, way too low. Love it. What about you, Monaf? You co-sign it or you, you're worried I about the lean towards the over and I do like the over here, but we got news about Chris Milton. Also Pat Covington is going to miss the first three weeks of the season as well with a calf oh, injury. Man. So oh, okay. I think for me season long, I am leading towards the over here, but I think you may be able to get a better number if they are struggling within those first few weeks, have not having those two key guys and getting an updated win total, let's say it drops below 50, get the gap to a slow start. And once Chris Middleton is back for this team, then mm-hmm. they really take off with drew holiday, Chris Milton and Giannis. Um, so yeah, for at least show purposes, I will stick with the over here. I think there's a team that can get 54 to 55 wins. And again, be a, a top three seed, even a number one or number two in the East. Definitely mm-hmm. don't place this mm-hmm. bet now. If you yeah. here, I wouldn't don't place the bet now, just wait like the first couple weeks or so. Here's where Moon off and I will disagree for the first time. Wow. You are not going to make <laughs> oh money taking God. overs that are north of 50 in the NBA. It's period. True. It's like a, a long term two thirds trend. So under uh, one of these will go over, but I'm going to take a under on the Milwaukee Bucks out of principle. Last system n- play. Not least my Philadelphia Analytics. Sixers. Analytics. The analytics on the Sixers are great. Um, they're oh a dream team. You got James Harden finally deciding to jog a little bit. Tyrese. I was Max. wondering why the Sixers hadn't come up yet. I thought about that in my head. I said, "Dang, did we skip the Sixers?" No, no should have known he was and a half, baby. Fifty-two and a half. They're right now the highest in the East for a reason. Going to dominate the regular season. We'll just have to see how things shake out for the playoffs. But um, they're good to go. Give me the over fifty-two and a half. Easy money. Moon off. Tell me why I'm right. First of all, it's the Philadelphia Rockets. All right, you need a chance. Yeah, you got the name wrong. So you're Rockets. really you're already behind the curve because you got the name wrong and you got the old jersey Uh-oh. too. Yeah, you need to go get the one. It I'm literally has the Rockets logo just kind of taped over a Sixers jersey. You need to get that one. I'm so embarrassed right now. I think the one thing that is gonna go is going right now for the Sixers team coming to see is James Harden is looking. He, he lost weight. 100 pounds. He, he's been looking all smiles in the offseason, and he has his guys now with him on this roster, right? PJ Tucker, Daniel House Jr. I, I want to take the over on this team. I really do, but I, I, I don't know. I feel like that if 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 one of Joel Embiid or James Harden is out for two to four weeks, that's going to flip this this win total real quick. And I'm not so on their bench either. I know they got DeAnthony Milton, another former Houston Rocket, but when you have Fork on Court Moss, Matisse Thibel, George Niang, Paul Reed, there isn't a really a playmaker in that second unit. That's where they maybe Tyrese Maxey comes in with that second unit, since he is going to be a starter, maybe roll with that second unit. But 
I'm, I'm going to lean with the under here. I, I, I think that this, this team gets the, this, this is the number spot on. I think they can, they're probably going to be around 51, 52. I think 53 and a half is a stretch for me. All right. Well, it's 52 and a half. So you're, you're, but you're on the right. un- I'll, Yeah, I'll still go under. I have a, a little bit of some inside information here. So when, so uh, Harden is in Los Angeles in the summers often. Yes. And uh, he's a big spin guy. That's one. That's his go-to cardio. Okay. I know an instructor. So I. What? Just listen to this. Okay. All right. It, I I read the, I read the, in my prep for this episode, which was all of a couple minutes. I did read <laughs> that James Harden is is looking fit. Disrespect. So I sent a text. I said, "Hey, is James Harden back to riding the bike?" Sounds like, sounds like he maybe is. Is there potentially he's being forced to lose some weight? And this is something he doesn't enjoy doing right now. And the second the season starts, he's going to get fat again. Is that possible? No. <laughs> Under. Harden is back. <laughs> Never. I've I've got. Uh, yeah. I'm he was saying, wearing a fat suit. Uh, Moon. He or, was. T- he Terrell, was clo- close it out. Suit. What do you got? So I like this better when we got it at fifty and a half earlier in the off season. Mm-hmm. Now you're making me pick it at fifty two, and it's like, uh. Because they can be a 51, 52 win team, potentially be number one, number two in the East. I don't be a square. This is gonna land I'm, I'm just 52. gonna. Is Joel Embiid is really too much of this handicap for me to take an under? So I'm gonna say over. I don't like it because I feel like I'm on too many overs, but dog, uh, dog. I have Joel Embiid to make All NBA first team at plus one twenty five because he's due. He's due. He's a great player that finally puts together. I- in his definition of a healthy season. And so now you have another year coming in. If he can play the games, if you're telling me I get 60 plus games of Joel Embiid and how he's able to go give you 30 and 10 any given night, then the only person that was holding him back was Jokic. Yeah. And Jokic, they're not giving Jokic three times in a row. So this is going to be the Joel Embiid coming out party this year. He's going to ball out and he's going to get every accolade that you could possibly give him. And that's going to force the Sixers to be good. Like that's in itself, that's going to force the Sixers to be good. So yeah, I'm on the Sixers over. I liked it better at 50 and a half, but uh, 52 and a half is a little concerning, but I think they still could hit it. Like this is a pretty solid team. Let's freaking go. All right, guys, time square play time to close it out. (laughs) Not, not super sharp. Like Kramer. I say well, 15 teams. Why don't we give out three locks, your best bets? Oh, wow. Okay. Or what are you thinking, Ryan? That sounds great. Okay. Uh, for my first lock, I'm going to give out the Charlotte Hornets under 36 and a half. Uh, again, we nail the injury stuff coming in. They're just destined to completely blow the team up. Toronto Raptors over another lock for me. Uh, again, like the institution, uh, they're just a quality team, and 47 and a half is too low. Boston Celtics under. 52 and a half. Are you kidding me? That is crazy, crazy high. Uh, Terrell, who are your, what are your favorite three win total plays here? All right. Easy enough. It's me. Come on. NBA gambling podcast. People know this Celtics under 53 and a half. Let's go. Very, very easy. Second bucks over 52 and a half. Don't like it as much. Now, if you're actually betting this wait further in the season, let the number come down. Cause it will come down a little bit. Let the number come down, then get in on it. Either way, I still like it. I think they end up over 52 and a half. Third, uh, give me the under on the Chicago Bulls. I think they're not going to be as good this year. Give me the under of Chicago Bulls. Like them. You ready for this? Yes. Is it my turn yet? Or sure, you? you can go. We'll close it out with Moonoff. Uh, oh, wait. No, Moonoff should go first. Moonoff, <laughs> Moonoff go first. One I was last, surprised that he asked, what, is it my turn? Because I'm one like, one last chance. <laughs> one last chance to copy Moonoff. What do you got? All right, uh, give me the over on the Toronto Raptors. Uh, Toronto Raptors, I'm sorry, 47 and <laughs> a half. Should have gone first. Yep. Um, let's go with the Charlotte Hornets under as Ooh, well. Fellow Sharp. And then. Um, it's a really good play. Miami Last Heat, one. over 49 and a half. I'm going to ride with the Heat again. God damn it. I was. You should have went. I should have gone first. Those you probably really would have been the moon offs. Area. No, I, I, two of them are uh, Toronto over Miami <laughs> over. I'll, I'll add this Miami to win their division, which I I'm not exa- It seems like you're basically playing heads up versus the Hawks uh, is minus minus one sixty. 
That yeah. feels like they're a great not. way, great they're way not. to. They're gonna win. That yeah, should exactly. really, it should really. If you talk about odds and like that how you're setting this and what those teams look like, it should really be like minus three hundred. It's like the Stafford interception prop. We're just getting a discount. That's a fun play. Also, to pair with the Toronto over the, Toronto to win their division, Sean. I know the Sixers and Celtics are in there. Is eleven and the Nets eleven to one. Eleven, hey. to, not to be the one seed of the. Uh, although maybe the better angle is just to play them to be the one seed of the. But yeah, eleven to one just to win their division. That's fun. And uh, all right, for my under, because I have to. I I did pick six overs and eleven and uh, what's that, ten or a nine <laughs> unders. Uh, nice, but I, I see that both Sean and I, I need it. I need a good juicy uh, uh, under, and I don't want to be on an island, so I'm going to take the Chicago Bulls. I like. Everything okay. Terrell mm -hmm. laid out there. Uh, the West is going to be more of a, a, a take some unders on shitty teams who are definitely tanking. But yeah, two overs, Sean. Two out of my six overs locked up. Let's hey, go. The Heat hey, minus he might be actually he might actually be an NBA shark because we gave uh, out that uh, Toronto <laughs> to win the division on our oh, show too. Really? Oh, well, of course I listen to the NBA gambling pod. Uh, Everyone <laughs> should listen to the NBA gambling podcast. Follow Moon off on Twitter at sports nerd eight two four. Follow Terrell on Twitter at really rel underscore. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We will be back uh, shortly. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll be live uh, pretty quickly here. Turn it around, do the Western conference. And then we're going to be doing college picks uh, on tomorrow's episode, NFL picks Wednesday, DFS and props there on uh, Thursday, Friday, closing out the week. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second Lonely Green, and he is Ryan. Shh, don't tell anyone. I just made a bet on the NBA. <laughs> Kramer, let it ride.